Hi. This is Art View, presented by the Arts and Cultural Alliance of Newport County. I'm Peter Sterling Turner, and this is the Newport Opera House. It's originally built in 1867. It was operating as an opera house, a vaudeville review house, and then was changed into a movie theater, and eventually in the 70s, changed into a cinema triplex. We're gonna go inside and talk to Dominique Alfandre and find out all about this huge restoration project <clears throat> that is underway. We have uh, had the huge reveal of revealing all this great stuff, tin ceilings and beautiful moldings and fleur-de-lis plaster lattice work, and there's some organ pieces in there, and um, let's go check it out. So we're here in the lobby of this historic opera house with Dominique Alfandre, and it is way under construction. And there's this gorgeous plaster ceiling that looks like painted tin ceiling over me that's, that's in repair. And everything's in repair. And there's wires hanging. And um, so tell me, what is going on? We are in the midst of the Opera House renovation. And what we did last summer was what we called the reveal. We got a grant from the McBeam Foundation to take out all the the stuff that made the Opera House a triplex theater. So if people who went to the movies here will remember, there was a theater in the balcony, and then there were two theaters on the first floor. And what they had done in the 1970s brilliantly was just put that construction, the plywood and the horrible polyester curtains and things, just over all the old detail of the Opera House. So we just went in last summer and just yanked it all away so that now the Opera House is one big theater again. And we took, the reason there's wires hanging all over the place is we took all the asbestos ceilings off. And by doing that, we revealed all of this plaster work and, and that people hadn't seen since before 1970. So it, it was really a, an amazing process. And people who walk in are just astounded. So that's why it's, that was one phase, and then we're, there's obviously more to come. <laughs> so yeah, we're working on it. There's so much to look at in here. It's so beautiful, this beautiful frieze over there and this giant dental molding. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I came here as a kid, and I don't want to date myself, but I remember when they first opened for 50 cents, I could see a matinee and get a small popcorn and a drink. <laughs> That's right, cents. yeah, back in 19, I'd say 75 maybe. That sounds right. Yeah. 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 And um, I understand also that there, this used to be a hotel in here somewhere. Well, that's the history of the Opera House. The, um, the Perry House Hotel was built in 1865 by an entrepreneur named Mr. Shanahan from Fall River. And it was, what is that, west, south of, the, uh, of where we are mm -hmm. now? Right. And it was this huge hotel. There's pictures of it. You can you can see in a little while. Um, uh, it had these big arched windows, and it went where the Horgan Building is now, and down to the Banana Republic Building. And in 1867, Mr. Shanahan decided that he had this big hotel. He needed to offer entertainment to his guests, so he built the Opera House Theater next door. And the way he did it was he made it look like it was just a continuation of the hotel. So the front of, the, of this building was hotel rooms, which we'll see later on, that are just these wonderful little rooms that look out onto Washington Square. I mean, it's not what we would want to stay in as a hotel, but in the 1870s and 80s and 90s, it was like prime. It was, it was a really grand hotel, and it had its own opera house. So. Um, and a great view. And a great view onto the square, yeah, and right in the middle of town. I mean, that's why this project is so great now, because it's right in the middle of town. So people will be able to walk here just the way they did in 1867, to walk to all the restaurants, walk to the water. Everything is within walking distance here. So that was Mr. Shanahan's idea, and it's still a good idea. So um, now the Perry House Hotel burned in the 1950s. 50s, I think it was, and the fourth floor of the Opera House also burned. So you'll see a picture of the facade as it was, which we hope to 
reconstruct, put the fourth floor back on, which we already have permission to do, um, which will just give us more space to do wonderful things for the community. And it'll make it look exactly the way it looked in 1867 here in the square, except the hotel. Well, which is important to keep the, um, the historical value. In this town, it's crucial, yeah. <laughs> it really is. So this will become the largest performing arts center in Newport County. And yes, it, it will, will have community programs, educational programs, international artists, um, mm -hmm. and maybe we can keep those hotel rooms open for the artists to stay in while they're while they're here. If we if we did every idea we have for the hotel rooms, we would need about five hundred and ninety five thousand hotel rooms. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll keep that in mind. There's a lot of other ideas for those little rooms. They're they're really magical. They're they're just so beautiful, and and that. The, the fact that everybody has an idea for those rooms is a, is a real testimony to exactly why we need the Opera House. Because it not, it's not only that Newport needs a theater. I mean, for heaven's sakes, it's this world-class destination, and it doesn't have a theater. It now has the Casino Theater, which is beautiful, but it seats under 300 people. So it's not going to fulfill all the needs of the performing arts community or the audience. But, but beyond the actual just hotel, I mean, not the hotel, the theater. Right. Beyond the theater, people need a place to do stuff. People need office spaces. People need classroom space for music lessons. People need exhibit space. People need, uh, people need a place to come. And the Opera House will be that place. It, it will be open 363 days a year and from morning till night. And people will be banging in and out of these doors all day long, doing wonderful things, all revolving around the arts. And it'll be a tremendous boon to the town. Well, we're down here, almost down onto the stage. And I think just to give you folks an example of what you're looking at, Dominique, can you uh, give us some history of the building, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. So Mr. Shanahan built it in 1867, and then and it was a vaudeville house, live performance, Doctor Somebody and his talking horses, you know, Anna, the Anna and the King of Siam, Anna lectured here. There's a great history of performance here, but then vaudeville died, as we all know, and in 1928 they decided to make it into a movie palace, and they just tore the whole place apart. Well, I'll show you a picture of it later. Um, it was completely gutted. So what we think we're looking at now is the 1929 restoration, 1929 construction. So the detail and everything. But interestingly, the proscenium, which is the big arch over the stage, it has carved plaster. We had this Mr. Plaster, the plaster history guru, um, Jeff Green from New York came, and he thinks that the plaster is 1867, which would mean that they moved the proscenium back, because when they made it into a movie theater, they didn't need a whole stage. So now there's only a 12-foot stage and the proscenium over it. but with the talking horses and all of that, it wasn't a 12-foot stage. It was a much bigger stage. So it's possible that they moved the proscenium back and eventually, under some capital restoration, we would like to move the proscenium back to where it really was in 1867 to give you a real proscenium stage. Um, so then in, uh, I think it was in the 20s, the Horgans bought the building. Um, a lot of people know the Horgans. They've bought, they've owned this building forever, until in 2001, the Newport Performing Arts Center board purchased the building and restored the facade. You'll remember that very attractive iron steel face that the building had for so many years. We took that down to reveal the windows and everything. And since then, we have been very, very careful to be good stewards of the building. We took out the theater seats that were on this level because they, were, they weren't great and we didn't think by the time we restored the building that they would be usable. So they, they were recycled by a theater seat company, which is great. And the theater seats upstairs are still okay. So we're gonna keep those, we think, and then 
get the theater seats here, but that's why it looks so empty here. It will have seats, of course. And um, so other things we've done to take care of the building, we've kept the roof up, we've fixed a whole um, gutter leak problem that was causing all these leaks. Um, we've just been trying to be very, very good stewards of the building because it's an important building and we want it to be structurally ready for whatever we want to do to it. So, and it is, it's in good shape. So that's where we are now. Yeah, great. It sounds like you're really taking care of the bones first and, and, and looking into the history and trying to figure out exactly what was going on and then and, and working from there. Yeah. And there's some there's a thought process behind it. It's not just rushed and, and uh, willy-nilly, like, willy -nilly, like when they put the three, the triplex in. Right. Um, can, <laughs> so do you think we could go... Um, up on stage maybe or I know there's like some sure. some organ over there and or used to be oh, over there, there and there's some ant, some <laughs> hidden room that that most of the general public will probably never see I guess it would be like what the green room yeah we think it was the green room well it's it's fun to look at so let's do that yeah that's exciting let's get over there okay. so we're here to the left of the stage which I guess what we call stage right stage right, stage right which what may or may not have been the green room for the performing artists, correct? Right. We're not really sure about this part of the building. We're not sure whether it was 1867 and then left over during the 1929 rest change to the movie palace, or whether it was built as part of the 1929 change. And for what reason, we can't really tell. It looks, when you go back, if you're really brave, if you go back and watch for sort of not great places on the floor. Hey, Peter, look at this. There's another way down over there, huh? Look at what? Someone was here. Yeah, look at the, the hand marks. With the vampire, they couldn't get out. But we do love to bring people back here because of these crazy posters. I mean, this was obviously from the movie era because these are movie posters. So somebody was back here and somebody was tacking up posters. <laughs> so it was it was functioning in 1929 and on. So. Yeah, or maybe it may have been storage or something. If you look at this facade here, this um, secondary brickwork that looks like w windows were bricked over. And I mean, well, the ceiling in this is way up there. Yes. I mean, and, uh, I the, wi the window thing is always fascinating to me because you have to remember in 1867, there was no electric light. So to do theater, you needed window. There are windows backstage because to do load in and everything, you needed light and there was no electricity. So it's interesting to think about. Yeah, it is actually. I mean, it's so apparently over here, there's a organ, and I'm going to go upstairs and try to see it. So we're in search of some organ, which apparently now I understand isn't really here. It's just some pieces, but we're trying to look for it. Oh my god. It goes way back here. And, oh, it looks really cool from the side. So we are behind the scenes. We're off way on the side, past where the organ bits are, all the organ pieces. And you can see the shadow of the fleur-de-lis. And this is actually an air vent where the air would, they would use for the organ, and what's cool is that you can see right through the fleur de lis out onto the opera house grand area. And surprisingly enough, this uh, plaster work isn't that fragile. <laughs> um, shall we venture, a little, get a little more adventurous? Now we're standing in a part of the old opera house, which was originally part of Mr. Sh Shanahan. Shenanigan, I mean, just kidding, <laughs> Shanahan's Hotel. And then at some point it became 
um, other kinds of purposes, and maybe you can tell me those. Well, we're not sure, but it was there was a military tailor up here. We know that for sure. But these rooms now are going to in the in the first phase of the restoration that we're planning. The first phase is to get the opera house open so that people can see performance here. Mm -hmm. And we're not the, we're interested in the detail and the 1867 and the 1929 and all of that sort of stuff, but that's not part of our plan for the first phase. Mm -hmm. The beautiful historic restoration will come later when we raise a whole nother boatload of money. So the plan though for these rooms even immediately is that this second floor will be opened up to become the grand lobby. Because when you come in on the street level, that lobby is going to be very small mm -hmm. because there's got to be another staircase, there's got to be an elevator, there's got to be a box office, there's got to be bathrooms. So it will, it will be similar. We always, I always tell people it will be similar to when you go to Trinity in Providence. You, know, you walk into that lobby, but you immediately go up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And right. there's the bar. We'll have a bar. We'll have, and it will be open to Washington Square, right. which is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then on the third and fourth floor, there's five rooms, and five rooms when we restore the fourth floor. Those rooms, these are such lovely little rooms. They can be used for offices. We're talking to partners in the community, like the Newport Festivals, the jazz folk and the music festival. We're talking to the radio station, to Rhode Island NPR. We'll need offices for the theater. Um, and then also we really want to use those rooms for classrooms, music lessons, people. Uh, assembly spaces for meetings, whatever. It, we want it, as I said before, to be really lively in here. And the rooms on the front give us this great opportunity mm -hmm. to do that because they're just spaces. They're, they're not ne needed for anything High else. Ceilings and it's just beautiful. Beautiful view of the square, you know. So that's the plan. That's mm -hmm. the plan so far. And it sounds really good. Um, let's <laughs> good go check out some of these other rooms and maybe we can see some other wallpaper or moldings and things. Right. Boo. These are the old bathrooms. And apparently, ghosts are here for real. I'm a spooked. And now, would really like to present a performing artist, a member of the Alliance, Michelle Cruz, that spoke to her earlier today. And this apparently is a song that she just wrote recently. And we are going to get to see the full acoustic capability of the building. Enjoy. Granted, You have 
We're standing on the balcony of what was Cinema 3, which I think I saw the spy who loved me here back in 1976. Um, but you can see it's quite a grand space. There's beautiful frieze behind us. Um, the Opera House logo with, I guess it's a satyr. But I'd like to just ask you, Dominique, could you take a few minutes and, and please tell us, actually, you know, we've had bits and pieces, but give us the vision, please. Well, the vision, uh, the big vision, is to have this beautiful restored theater in Washington Square that's active all the time. The, the first phase of that vision is to get the Opera House open. So the, the nitty gritty of that is that we need to uh, put a thrust on the stage so that the 12 feet becomes 32 feet so that you can have dance, you can have theater, you can have opera, you can have chamber orchestra. Um, then if you're a comedian or a chamber a string quartet or somebody who only who can deal with 12 feet, the thrust could be put away and you could get the extra seats. Mm -hmm. But it'll be around 700 seats. And the great thing about 700 seats is that there's no other theater in Rhode Island that's 700 seats. And everybody wants to use this theater because it's not too big and it's not too small. <laughs> it's right. the Goldilocks Theater. So um, the, to do that, also what we need to do is up here in the balcony, we need to change what's called the rake of the seating. Because if you ex extend the stage forward, the sight line gets lost because mm -hmm. they built this sight line for the movie screen where you saw the spy who loved me. Right, yeah. Right up there. Yeah. So, so the rake needs to get much more steep for the seating up here, mm -hmm. which, which is great because it means we can use some of the back of the balcony for tech, for the lighting booth tech stuff that needs to happen in the mm -hmm. theater, maybe some storage or something like that. So, so when we do that, fix the rake, extend the stage, get top of the line sound equipment, lighting equipment, so that whatever happens on the stage looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. Then the plaster work and the carpets and the, all of that sort of stuff will be something that people see, just the way you've seen them in, right. on the film, but they won't be what people expect from Newport. You know, we expect the historic restoration here to be top drawer. But we decided, the Opera House board decided, that what we wanted to do was get the theater open. 
So what we're trying to do is raise $5 million to get the theater open. Right. And everybody says, how long is that going to take? And we say, well, it'll take $5 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If someone walked in with $5 million, it would take about 18 months right. to, do all the, to do the fire mm -hmm. safety, to do the electric, to do right. the plumbing. Right. And there's so that enormous it's structural the happenings that have to happen for lighting and sound over the stage. Right, and right. Luckily, the, structurally, the, the, the yeah. building itself is in great shape mm -hmm. because we've been taking care right. of it. But yeah, you're right. There's the lighting and sound. Enormous. The details are just enormous. Yeah. yeah, and and also luckily we have an amazing theater designer who's been working with us for the whole, you know, the last five years, named Christopher Buckley, who's done all these theaters in New York, and he did in particular, if people know their Broadway, the New Victory, which has programming that I would love to replicate mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's like smart family programming. It's it's like fabulous, world-renowned artists, but performing for family audiences, um, which would be a great draw here. Anyway, Chris did the restoration of the new victory, mm -hmm. and it turns out that the bones of it are exactly like our theater. Wow. So we went down and looked at it, and yeah, it's cramped, there's not enough wing space, but, but they're making it work at the new victory, so yeah. we know that it can work yeah. here. Yeah. And people are so excited about using it. I mm -hmm. mean, there's, you know, we've been talking to Trinity Rep, we've been talking to the GAM Theater, mm -hmm. we've been talking to Theater by the Sea to extend their, their seasons, and we've also been talking to all of our local festivals, jazz, the folk, the music, the film, um, to be able to do more programming, because mm -hmm. that's what everybody wants to do. Isla Moving Company will finally have a season in a, on a stage that's big enough for us and right. indoors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's just going to be a tremendous opportunity for the performing arts world in Rhode Island. But it'll also be a great opportunity for people in town. You know, the tourists are the tourists, and the tourists will come because we'll have world-class programming right. but oh just think you know it's february and you want to go out and you want to go out and have dinner but you want to go do something after mm -hmm. dinners you'll be able to go and see jazz or dance or theater or a playwright mm -hmm. workshop that's been here for two weeks and anyway the possibilities yeah. well, are my, endless for myself growing up in newport and being involved in the performing arts um it's to, for me to think of future generations having this for them, it brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> the Arts and Cultural well, Alliance of Newport County promotes and advances arts and culture for the benefit of our community. We provide That's valuable networking opportunities for those seeking to be involved in the arts. The Alliance I draws its strength from the talent, energy, and passion of its members. For more information, including membership benefits, events, and more, visit www.newportarts.org. To contact or request a spotlight on ArtView, please email acaartview at gmail.com. For more episodes of ArtView, visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash user slash ACA Newport. I need your arms. Oh, uh -huh.